Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of TFT Hyperroll with Artark. We are now on the live server. All the previous videos I did before were from the PBE and that last final week, which was supposed to be approximately the same patch, but it was going over all of the builds that I had previously shown in my big video with the exception of that double trouble one which if you haven't seen it check it out that game was so much fun to play anyway this is my very first game on the live server in hyper roll before we get into what the build is uh, you know the drill like comment subscribe do all the stuff that helps the youtube algorithm the channel has been growing so fast it is so cool to watch but this is going to be Animaniacs, and that was the only option I left myself from when I started. I didn't think about anything other than doing this. Now the game is trying to tempt me away because it gave me a Velkaz out of the first round and then some really, really not conducive augments. I decide to go with preparation as probably the best choice of this group to work with the Animaniacs build because I'm going to try to get a three-star Jinx, and that means I'm going to have multiple Jinx on the bench, so they will be able to gain from preparation. Our three key Jinx items are Rage Blade, Spear of Sojin, and Static Shiv. Pretty much in that order. It's really important to speed up her casting, it's really important that she casts more often, and it's kind of nice if she's also shredding the magic resist on the opposing team. So with that in mind, the item choice is easy, we're grabbing the bow, we're making a Rage Blade, and we're off to the races. Now Animaniacs does not always have a fast start. It can if you end up picking up a Jinx Hero Augment, but that is hardly guaranteed. If you're going to get it, you're likely to get it on the first Augment, but uh, yeah, they don't happen all the time. Now one of the fun slash annoying things with preparation is situations like this. On my bench, I have a Jinx with two steps out of the three for preparation. I can get a two-star Jinx and put her in and probably then guarantee myself winning the next match. But that is not my best move. I'd rather make sure to get the third step of preparation. There's no guarantee I'm getting a three-star Jinx. And if I don't, I'd rather have a fully prepared two-star. So I'm going to hold her in the shop while we go through this next round and probably lose because of it. Lucky for me, I ran into someone who had a bunch of one-star champions who they're going to create into something a little more intimidating later. But right now, they're easy to take down, so I didn't have to take the loss to get my fully prepared Jinx. Next item choice is also easy. Remember, Rage Blade, Spear of Sojin, and Static Shiv. BF Sword plus Tear of the Goddess equals Spear of Sojin on a fully prepared Jinx. The other thing you do when you have preparation is look for chances like this. When you have a non-prepared Nasus in, you can continue to pick them up and hope that you can then take that so that it can become a fully prepared one-star unit. I always like to bring mascots into the build because they will provide a little bit of healing. And since the healing they provide is a percentage of health, it works really well with the Anima Squad build because they are gaining health throughout the match each time they get a takedown. It's not a huge amount of health, but every little bit helps. It is time for our second augment, and this group is meh. Nothing really fits, so we're going to roll it and... I guess we can work with Exiles. Uh, the nice thing is with Anima Squad is that you can separate them. There's no need for them to be clumped together. And since they're gaining additional health, Exiles will actually wind up helping them. We go ahead and put the Tear of the Goddess onto Jinx in the infinite hope that we are going to get a bow so we can make the Static Shiv. The Static Shiv is important because Misfortune is going to be the cleanup on this team when we can find her, and she does AP damage, so shredding the magic resist is critical for endgame. Luckily, the NPC round had a bow, so we're going to get to make that Static Shiv. I pick up the Giant's Belt so we can make a Sunfire Cape on one of our frontliners. I tend to use Alistair for this. He is the tankiest sort of of the group, and he has a heal, so that will keep him there longer. Now, we're really looking for our Pranksters and Misfortune. 
Stage six is probably the toughest spot for this build because you're not likely to get your misfortune at this point and she's really who you need to start cleaning stuff up. I'm currently using Vane as just a fill-in for her, but it's not the same. We are now one Nasus away from a gold, so we're hoping that that can happen. We're also getting our Zoe fully prepared to come in in stage seven. Also, once we reach stage seven, we're going to be hunting for Miss Fortune who can help finish off this team and make it exactly what we want it to be. It's time for our final augment and thrill of the hunt is an easy choice because one thing this build lacks is healing. You really don't have a good spot for heal items. Uh, the Tear of the Goddess is the obvious choice because we found Miss Fortune, we get to put her in. Spear of Sojin and Jeweled Gauntlet are great items for her. I'd love to get a Rage Blade just to speed up her attacks, but this will absolutely do for now. We're just wanna, gonna find another one to put on the bench so she can start getting prepared. And we all know why Misfortune is so destructive to opposing teams. Her wave of bullets not only does tons of damage, but because she's an ace, if they get below 10% health, she's just going to execute them. Actually, I'm sorry, it's now 12% health. They made them a little bit stronger. Now this build, like a lot of builds, does come down to luck. If you happen to get Misfortune in stage six, you're going to have a pretty easy cruise through the entire match. If you're unable to get her in stage seven, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because she is going to be what solidifies your team. Our next couple of item choices just end up being about tanking up the front line. They give us the option for a Dragon's Claw and I will take that and put it on Alistair. And then we open this. And while I was hoping for a Rage Blade or something like that for Misfortune, we can grab another Dragon's Claw and put that on Alistair so he will be very resistant to any type of magic damage. Now there is one more thing we need to make this build complete and that is Echo. Echo will give us the third prankster which will allow the little target dummies that are left behind to actually stun people when they kill them. So that will be key for being able to pull this out. And Rolling found us exactly what we needed. We have the Echo, so now we have our third prankster. And so that's going to change everything in terms of how the team will work together. Now Echo will leave a target dummy that can stun people. As you can see there, Jinx got out of the way and that ends up keeping us alive. We went ahead and grabbed a Leona to give us the three Aegis so we get extra magic resist. I grab an Ionic Spark that can either go on Leona or onto Echo. Often that's good on Echo. And I was going to grab Thieves Gloves here to put on one or the other, but decide, you know what? Misfortune casting is so important. Let's give her a blue buff on top of the Spear of Sojin since that was our final item. And with everything now in place, our team has become quite tanky and quite strong. Putting the blue buff on Misfortune, yeah, it might be a little bit of overkill, but it does come with an AP bonus now and gets refunded mana when she gets a takedown, so it makes it easy to bring us into the top four. Or should I say top three, because the five went down to three, and we get a two-star Leona. And this is the team I was mainly preparing for when I decided to pick up Leona and go to three Aegis instead of getting something like Fiddlesticks to finish off the entire build. I often use Fiddle because he will keep people clumped together when he does his ult and that's great for Misfortune, but we needed that extra magic resist to take on a Zoe and a LeBlanc with this kind of power. You can see that it makes us very resistant and allows us to just end up wiping them off the map. A lot of people run Aegis right now because there is so much AP in this set, probably more than any other set, but every once in a while you run into teams like this at the end that are really heavily AD based and they are going to be able to chew through your Aegis champions. So your hope is that you can get through them first. And here you'll see why I like this build so much because that prankster trait is going to save us. We are able to stay alive not once but twice as Kale almost takes us out but the escape lets us win. 
Since that fight was a real close one, I am really glad to see that the AP team is the one we get to face in the final round because that is the one we're really prepared for. Alistair with his double dragon's claw and our three Aegis team is able to withstand their onslaught. There's really not much they can do. They would have to first get to Misfortune, but also manage to survive her ults, which as you can see, it's not that easily done and very quickly it is gg for everyone now i'm going to let this play out beyond the normal ending just because i want to show that this yes was my very first live match or at least match on the live server i should say i did decide to force animaniacs just to see if it was as reliable as i found it to be during the pbe and the fact that it resulted in a win told me yeah this is pretty reliable you can see i'm promoted up to gray tier and then you know game one of five I feel like they did a slightly harder reset than in seasons before because I got 450 points and I remember getting much more in early games in other seasons. But we'll see more as it goes on. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.